again. We're doing another ski analysis video with Jamie. Um, and today it's great because we get to look at Jamie instead. Um, and I'm sure on your behalf, I'll pull him apart. Let's see what he did. We popped up onto the uh, Kitchstein Horn um, with the fact that we're getting so much snow and obviously no guests. Yeah. It means that you can ski powder all day and still find, you know, lines all over the mountain. You can't pay your mortgage. You can't afford to eat, but at least you get powder all at day. At least you get powder. So, so um, here is, um, uh, the, 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 let me explain what we've got here. So we're doing some video and photograph of this at the bottom of this run. Um, it's a relatively short run, but it's an extremely steep run. Um, and you can see that clearly because as it comes to like almost the vertical pitch here, you can see how it just drops off. It's almost like a jump, like a drop. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty, 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 nice. pretty deep. Um, and I can show actually like, you know, a snowboarder going down the same run, for example. And you can see again, like how he handles you it. You could show Vada come down right pussy down as well, couldn't you? Yeah, you pitch. could show so. that trainers uh, had a bit of a, a moment of, whoa, that's steep. <laughs> um, but yeah, the great thing is with this run is it's, um, it's, it's, you know, from my side looking at it, it's controlled. Um, Jamie goes into it you know he's not doing um, I'm, I'm a bit old school obviously and you know I see these videos online all the time and you know I don't know what you think and I, I, I can see them like there's a couple on Instagram a day and to me they're just like straight lining down these cool wires with some wobble and say hey don't get me wrong I get you you're a brave lad and you're flying down there at like 110 kilometers an hour and but I'd rather see this than see somebody straight lining and going over a few jumps. And I know it's different. I get why people like that. And I'm not criticizing them that way. I get respect the brave. The <laughs> thing for me is I would love to open this out, but I get two turns. You get two turns. Pitch, yes. So it's like, I don't want to waste the pitch. Um, we'll hike and we're getting and photographs. We'll hike, we'll hiked out for it as well, though, as yeah. well. So it was uh, definitely worth the hike for the, yeah. whatever it is, eight, 10, 12 turns down the pitch. But, um, yeah. But my, my, anyway, coming on to it, because we will look at um, uh, Jamie's uh, discipline in the skiing on this run, is as we approach probably here where this pole plant goes in and we start hitting this steep pitch here, this is my favourite bit, actually, not the turn afterwards, because I, I, one thing that Jamie's always had a great strength at is super discipline with his upper body, but he has incredible ability to um, turn under his upper Just body. One second, guys, and this pole's never this nice to me off camera. He's actually never this nice to me normally on camera, but uh, I'm pleased we're recording this so I can play this back um, just to boost my ego um, a little bit. <laughs> and it's great because of the 100 frames a second at 4K. So this video is obviously high quality and the frame rate's super good. We can literally see what happens throughout this fantastic um, rotation underneath his his upper body. It's very stable upper body. And look at the pole plan going out forward. So tips and tricks is, well, let, let's first see what you were thinking down here because probably not much, probably just enjoying it. Um, yeah, so my, my, th my thought process was um, I'm a little bit lighter than a few of the other guys, so I wasn't quite getting as much spray. And I never normally go off-piste with an off-piste ski, but I had an off-piste ski on this this day because it was more prepared. It wasn't just, yeah, we'll, it wasn't just I'm that. on the mountain anyway. We're, we're up there working. Let's go off-piste. I'm on a 67 underfoot G GS ski. Um, so I've got a 90-something underfoot. Um ski on so i wasn't kind of getting this the sinking feel that i normally get and i like that i don't mind the hard work to get you know as much face shots up. as you can yeah, yeah. um so i had a few runs and i was thinking oh i really i'm not getting the spirit the guys are getting who are maybe 15 kilos heavier than me so i need to really jump on it so try and actively pressurize a little bit more all right let's go down here with that kind of thought in, in, in my mind strengthen up my upper body as soon as i set off so tap my poles and get everything solid and stable in the upper body and then um yeah just just go for it just strong physical effort and enjoy it um but i'm really trying to work work the platform for sure and my thing i want to point out to people because people for several reasons people if they skied this um 99 of people would would bottle out you know they, they would traverse it they get to a point around here and traverse yeah it's now, too steep you have to in deep snow like this and this is one of the biggest problem is is people fear the speed element mm. you have to literally say this is the a point this is the a the starting point and way back down here is the b point where jamie's now reached comfortable flatter terrain again 
there is no option but to commit through those A and B points. You just can't have a break. You can't have a break of stop, like, turning yeah, and yeah. moving. There, there isn't point. Otherwise, he'll miss the turn. I think because the terrain, you, you can't really see it. Yeah. It never really does it justice on camera as how steep it actually is. It's, it, I mean, you've got a v- literally a vertical pitch where the turn opens out into something long before I pull it back. But all I'm really thinking when I set off is, Turn, turn, turn. Commit. The, the terrain's yeah. creating more distance between each arc because of the drop off, because of the vert. Um, just yeah, like commit, and then obviously when yeah. I, I go over that vertical section, it's just compress and suck and you can the see that underneath. if he wanted to do anything better, is what Jamie would have had to do here on this vertical point here. Is you can see he's quite compressed, but he would actually even have to have sunk down more. Because that extension is completely not needed because the terrain is dropping away from you so fast. And at this point, obviously, the only thing you can do is hold on. But what he does is he commits. And this is the point between A and B. What I'm trying to explain to you is that he knows that within two turns of that problem area there, that steep bit, you're going to be back in control. So you're happy to focus on the commitment here. Whereas a lot of people would get nervous here like me, and I would sort of traverse out <laughs> and make but some the, turns. To be fair, that terrain came about so quick. I didn't, didn't, I didn't it see it until I was on it. I didn't see the drop-off until I was on it because yeah. it was already steep anyway, so I wasn't really expecting anything to be much steeper than that. And, and it just dropped away. And then all I was thinking once I went away, probably in that split second, is get your feet back underneath you, kind of pull it back to try and get back in the center of the platform so you can start to you know, have some form of control again and bring yeah. it back into a turn. So what people need to understand is it'll feel faster than it should. First thing in powder that I would give a tip of, be aware it's going to feel faster than it should. And it, that's how it should feel. It should feel quicker. It should feel like I'm a bit out of control. <clears throat> so all you've got to do is commit. Yeah. You've got to get on top of the platform. And I think everything that, you do, that you've been doing on piste is you've got a heightened friction. We spoke about it in the previous... Um, podcast a little bit is just you know get everything so much more stronger in the upper body because you got so much more not just forces but kind of friction present with the the, the foot the platform the leg depending on the depth that you're getting and um, within the snowpack so it's just strengthen everything up so much more before you commit to that run and then it is like paul says it's a it's a commitment thing it's it's go for it um yeah yeah go, go for it commit so it'll feel faster than it should and it's Obviously, you have to understand, with, unless you have the ability to do, and this takes a lot of skill, to do what Jamie does there, which he really redirects the ski, you're more likely to end up skiing it like this. Um, let's say if I put Gunther on screen, um, it'll be slightly, and if you look at his turns at the top, they are more direct. You know, the, the, the more in the fall line, Me. if you like. Type. Yeah, both, yeah, both um, you and Gunther at that point. I but you are good at redirecting. I wasn't having as much success on the previous run. We didn't ski this pitch before, but on the, the, the pitch next to it, because um, I was turning, too, turning much. too much. So I was like, I need to go more direct. I need to... Because the snow was, was relatively deep as well. There's a height and friction, which is reducing speed. Um, so yeah, it was just, let's, let's, go. So let's go for it. I think people need to understand that you need to stay with the platform. You need to expect it to feel faster than it should. And you need to focus in your brain and say, this is my starting point. Once you start running, you, you have a, see the finishing point. You know it first. See, right, that's where I'm going to stop. That's where I'm going to make my, don't hockey stop, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll fall over. But just, you know, where I'm going to turn out slowly to a stop. So you, you, you've got a pitch. You've got an, ex, um, an inclusive pitch of, I don't know, 40 meters, where you know you can't stop till you reach that 40 meters. And that's your target, yep. if you like. Yeah, yeah. And just go for it. Like, expect everything to happen quicker. Yeah. And it, it rely and trust on your piste performance stuff. Yeah, it's bring it in that you speed. do on piste is there in the off piece. It might be the tactic of bringing the feet closer together as opposed to hip distance apart to aid flotation a little bit. Um, and don't worry, I would say, Jamie, in fairness, for people wanting to get better at off piece, don't be scared of using skis like Jamie's using. Like, you know, there is a reason for doing it. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to help massively. Well, the, for me, all I could, what I kept on saying to the lads was, um, it feels like a blue one. We're on steeper than a black, and it feels like a blue because the platforms just makes life so much easier because I'm used to something so much narrower, and I was missing the feeling that I was used to of having a narrower platform. 
Um, but yeah, so, they so definitely are an, a huge benefit. Emphasize that, though, that a lot of people who are skiing, let's say, you know, get caught on a ski holiday, they're six days recreational skiers, yeah. and day four, there's a load of snow. They yeah. not, might not even understand that actually that recreational ski you've rented, yeah. that's 70 millimeters underfoot or whatever, is way too narrow for your ability on that day. And just getting and renting a wider ski yeah. could just create such an easier yeah, day for you. you having you know such a pleasurable day because it's floating so um yeah. yeah i would definitely would be something i would recommend and we've done that with clients cl where yeah. we've had yeah. clients um groups on ski instructor courses and let's say six of them are having a great day aren't they with our race skis they're able to do it the dynamic but two of them are frustrated really having stress we'll go into the shop and go look come out again in the afternoon, take that ski yeah, with you, yeah. and all of a sudden they're like, yeah. oh, this is so much easier. Well, yeah, because the you don't have to work. designed for that, ultimately. Yeah. It is, it's, that's a powder ski that I'm on. It's designed for that snowpack, so it's going to aid me. Um, my race ski is designed for racing on firm pack snow, so it's going to hinder me to a degree, but because I've hopefully developed the skill set over time to turn the ski correctly, I like the feeling of having to work that little bit harder in that snowpack to do what I can do on the piece for and that And obviously ski. don't pick a run like Jamie's picked, you know, pick relatively flat runs where you can start to feel it but remember speed is your friend and if it's too flat you're not going to be the turn you're just going to be stuck yeah i mean everything we, we hit everything we hit that day if it wasn't pretty much vert because of the amount of snow we weren't we were Moving. unable to turn really yeah. so you were still doing really shallow turns you couldn't show any performance where you had to go steep um i think if you are doing an intro to powder it's just pop to the side of the piece slightly to start off with and mm. feel what the snowpack's like then. Wait for it to be a powder day um, so you're going to get a good level of, of, of snow um, mm. and nice... And of course, then it's great to pack. have a coach who will probably say, look, we'll traverse in, do a couple of bounces, we'll traverse back the other way, bounce a little bit, because... From those turning um, functions, pressure is extremely important in understanding how to create a platform under your foot. Because if you don't, you've got nothing to turn off. But I think it's you're gonna. I wouldn't go oh, to powder day, and I've never skied powder. I'm gonna get a power. I'm gonna get a lesson specifically for powder on that day. It's now he's looking at the weather throughout your vacation and go, oh, it's shown a powder day on Wednesday. Today's Monday. I'm gonna take a lesson Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so you can have a good day on the Wednesday and enjoy it. So because yeah. it's your piece performance, it's it's no matter what the the snowpack is, it's the same sort of technique to a degree. So it's strengthening up your piece performance side of things and your body management on the piece, and then taking that into the powder and into the off piece on that 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 Wednesday, um, and you'll have a much better day. So I would say prepare for the powder the day before. And the way to do that is that my day. argument would be is that most people when they're skiing those lovely groomed runs they don't move enough. They don't absorb enough. They don't understand how important it is to be able to um, have that eccentric as well as concentric and isometric movement patterns that you um, are able to finish a turn by some sort of absorption as well. Most people are just stiff. And if you're stiff and you go in the off piece to when it's snowy like that, you're always going to have problems. I think the the, the, the variable conditions and the, and the off piece conditions humble people. Um, it's you know it it shows up your mistakes that you're making. Um, it shows up your weaknesses. Um, so yeah, I think it's you definitely should. You, people just switch off. They don't realize skiing is a sport. It is a leisure activity for a lot of people, but to do it well, it is a sport, and you need to have a certain amount of sportiness to be able to ski powder well, and um, without just putting on a fat boy and just you know. Straight straight line straight line. Down. which is what you'll see a lot of people do on, on these normally they're a bit younger and stuff they're gun ho and they'll, they'll have a big fat ski on and they're doing like proper super g turns down the slope whereas what i liked about jamie's run is he didn't do like a super g turn like you said he could have just done two turns and look oh look at me Woo! and do two fast turns it's nice to see somebody make those sort of old school short turns down a steep run it looks cool you know and photograph wise the photographs came out really good because on each turn there was some nice nice shots so well done jamie and um, that's the last time i much. give him any credit um i promise not to be nice to jamie on the next one and we'll back see to, you back to normal back guys to normal. we'll see you then Take bye it now. easy bye